Do you ever have one of those days where everything just seems to go wrong? Because that's definitely been my morning today. <laughs> and while I feel like I've recovered from that portion of my morning, I just feel like the rest of the day has been weird and nothing has gone the way that I've planned, which it's fine. I don't necessarily mind. It's been kind of a fun day in that regard, but at the same time, it's like, okay, let's just get back to schedule. You know what I mean? But here we are. And today we're going to talk about some of my favorite ways to make your notion more aesthetic. It's been raining here all day today, so I have my nice little warm hoodie on in my comfy clothes and a nice warm drink to go with it. So if you want to grab something warm and join me, feel free or grab something iced if you're in somewhere much warmer than here. And let's go ahead and jump right in. A quick disclaimer, I prefer a much more minimalistic style on my Notion, which means I mainly just use what's in Notion to come up with the style that I have. I don't really do a whole ton outside of Notion to like bring in in terms of like widgets and gifts or anything like that. I just like it very clean and calm and not too many things popping out at me so that I can focus on what I'm in there to do in Notion. All right, my first place that I always start is in my page settings. Now you might already know this, but I want to share it just in case you don't, that in the settings, there are three things that you can change. One being the font for that entire page, another being the size of the font, and then the third thing being the page width. Now there's three different font options. There's one that's like the typewriter text, one that's a serif and one that's a sans serif. And then all three of those fonts could be either changed to large size or a small size. Personally, I love using the serif font with the small text option. I don't know why, it just feels a little bit more spacious to me maybe and clean. That's the way I like it. <laughs> and then lastly, you can change the page width on any of your pages. This is honestly probably one of the first things I do every single time I make a new page. I love it being full width. There's a very few times where I actually don't want it full width. I think part of me thinks that when it's not full width, you're wasting space on the page, or I maybe just don't like the white space on the sides. I think I like it to be full. So everything that I make in my Notion pretty much is full width um, with the serif font and then on the small size. Now, a quick bonus tip with this one, if you use headings within Notion, one of the easiest things to do to change up your heading is to either put it in all caps or italics or even adding some spaces between the letters. All of those different things can really change the entire look of your heading without really doing anything drastically different to it. You're really just kind of playing with the way that you type it in and coming up with a completely different look each time. But if you do want to do something drastic, you can, and that is with KTEX. A fun fact about me, my degree is actually in meteorology. And when I was in school, we would write research papers and use the language latex to write in the math equations with all the little fancy symbols so that it looked good in your research paper. And KTEX is actually just a sister language to latex, so it's used to write math equations. But because of that, it has a ton of cool symbols and has some fun fonts that you can choose from to incorporate into your Notion page because it works directly in Notion, which is really cool. To add KTEX to your Notion page, you have a few different options. You can either use an inline equation block, a block equation block, which is essentially a call out looking version of the inline equation, or you can just surround your KTEX equation with two dollar signs on each side of that and it will automatically bring up a KTEX equation. If you choose to use KTEX in Notion for heading purposes, the base kind of equation for it would be to do a backslash, then the command that you would want which would give you the format, and then curly brackets and the word that you want inside of that. There's actually a really cool Notion page that goes through all the different things that you can kind of do for text within Notion using KTEX, and I encourage you to check that out. I will leave the link in the description so you can see it, 
but it tells you kind of all the commands that you might want and then all the cool color options that you can use and just click on whatever it is that you might want to see and it will show you the formula behind it. By using Ktex, you have so many different options on what colors you want because you can literally use any hex code color that you would like to put into your Notion page and it really kind of opens the door to coming up with an individual style that you might love for your Notion pages. I use Ktex very sparingly personally just because I feel like it's kind of a lot of work to get it in there, more so than just like writing a heading, for example. But if there's some place where I do want something a little bit more special to show up, I will put in Ktex just because I know that it can do some really cool things. There's also another really cool function that I love to use within Ktex, and that's a divider. And yes, Notion does have a divider itself that's horizontal, which I do encourage you to use. It adds just a little bit of visual space between things and helps you kind of separate things out. I really love to use those myself. But if you want to, with Ktex, you can make a vertical divider. You can just change this base code that I'm showing right now on the screen to include a different amount of pixels in terms of the width of that line and or change the color of it to kind of look however you want it to look. The second larger amount of pixels is how long you want that to be. So if you have a page that you want to divide that's super long, you can just add more pixels to that. Or if you just want it to be a very short little divider, you can take it way down. I don't know, but I just kind of feel like this divider feels like a little cheat code for Notion, I'm not gonna lie. I don't use this one super often, but when you kind of need a little break between your columns, this is a really great option. Just be aware that if you are using mobile, it's not going to show up in quite the same way because with the mobile devices, it shows you each block and it goes down like this column Column, then this column, then that column, right? So what it will do is it'll show you that your first column and then it shows you just like the line until you get to your next column. They're not like next to each other, if that makes sense. So if you use Notion quite a bit on your mobile phone, you might not want to use this type of divider because it's annoying, but it doesn't bother me enough on the pages that I use it on to care. So <laughs> I kind of just use it anyway, but it's a really fun visual tool to break up your Notion page if you need it. All right, let's talk your overall Notion page. When I make a new Notion page, I always want my colors to be coordinating. You may have noticed that all the colors that are intrinsic within Notion are kind of pastel colors. So whenever I pick my cover photo for the page or if I want to add any images into my page, I try to pick ones that match the colors that are already there. So an easy thing to look up if you're using like the unsplash feature is to just search like pastel things in there and then use those because they're already probably going to match the colors that Notion has and that makes it much easier for you to design your entire page using that color scheme rather than trying to come up with something completely different. I've been on kind of a big sunset, like cloudy sky kick <laughs> with mine, just because I feel like they're really easy to pull a couple of free colors from and use it everywhere within the Notion page. And then I don't really have to try to design a aesthetic for it. It kind of is already picked out for me. That just makes it a lot easier for me. I really tend to enjoy neutrals in my personal life, but I also don't want there to be no color ever. So picking things that are pastel themed for me has been nice to include some color, but not something that's like overly stimulating to me when I open my Notion page. Another thing I do to keep myself from getting too overstimulated in my Notion pages is not using emojis for the icons. Now you can totally do this if you want, if it matches your color theme that you've got going on or you think it looks cute and it makes you happy, that's great. For me, it was just too much. I didn't like all the colors happening everywhere and it was throwing me off quite a bit. I actually started going to notion.vip to get my icons because they have an awesome icons library there that's free to use. And you can just copy the link to it and post it in the custom area of your icons. And I just really like those because they still give you a cute little icon of what your page might be about without it being something that's super bright and stimulating like an emoji might be. Notion also added their own icons library recently, which I have used quite a bit as well since they've added that. I use so many of the icons from notion.vip that I don't want 
other icons to not match because <laughs> that would bother me too if they weren't matching. So I love that the Notion icon library allows you to kind of pick your colors from that. So I can just grab the dark gray color and it pretty well looks like the other ones that are there. There's not enough difference that I'm like, oh no, those colors are off or anything like that. I also just find that having those type of icons, it just looks a little bit more clean, which I like. But then more importantly, when I look at the page names, I am actually looking at the names of the pages instead of trying to figure out what the page is by looking at the emoji because when you see the emoji, you immediately look, oh, emoji. And then you're trying to remember like what that page was actually about. <laughs> so I like having the icons because then I focus more on the text than I do on the image, if that makes sense. I don't know, it's definitely a me thing, but if you feel overstimulated by emojis as well, you might love this option and it really just kind of cleans up your page in general. And then lastly, there's widgets. Everybody loves widgets, right? Since I've been using Notion, they've added a lot more different places that you can go and get some pretty cool widgets from, honestly. So I'm gonna leave my links to my favorite ones below so that you can check those out. You can get quite a few for free. There are options to upgrade. I do not do that. So I just get all the free ones that I can, but there are some really cool ones if you're looking to upgrade just a little bit. I personally use my widgets really sparingly because as I kind of said earlier, I really like my page to be minimal and focused on what I want to do on the page rather than looking at too many things on the page. But I think you can do this really well without overwhelming yourself. The way I kind of choose which widgets I want to use on my page is I kind of ask myself, what would I want to see on this page or what would help make this page a little bit more useful? If that might be adding a clock or adding the time, then there are a ton of options for that or if you want to add a calendar to show you the dates, I love doing that one. And I include that one on my goal planning template because that helps me remember what quarter we're in or what month it is. And then I've had my weather one on my dashboard for so long. I love that little thing. I think it's so cute and it's helpful and I can kind of check in and see, oh, what's the weather going to be? But it's minimalistic enough in the design that I don't feel like I'm getting distracted by looking at it. I can choose to look at it if I want, but it doesn't take away why I came to that page in the first place. If you're having a hard time using Notion or it just feels too difficult to focus on when you're in there, you might want to ask yourself if you have too many widgets because that can make a really big difference. Before you focus on anything in terms of aesthetic, make sure you have some functionality behind your Notion page. You can check out my previous video that was all about how I make workflows within Notion that will help guide you through the process of thinking through how to make a Notion page that is functional and works for you and so that you're able to actually get things done when you open up your Notion. I think there needs to be a balance between fun and functionality within your Notion. And if you don't have the functionality portion of it down yet, you can't really focus on the fun part because nothing of it's going to be fun if you're not getting done what you actually meant to do when you open up the app in the first place. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up so that I know that it was helpful for you. And let me know in the comments what your favorite tip was. I know it's kind of a simple one, but I think mine is actually the ability to change your page width and to change the font within Notion because that's just really made me love the pages even more that I can customize it like that. Don't get me wrong, the original font for Notion is okay, but that serif is just chef's kiss. If you loved some of these tips and you're gonna plan to use them in your Notion page, I would absolutely love to see them. Take a screenshot and tag me on Instagram so I can see how you use this in your Notion page. I think some of the fun behind Notion is that it can be so individual. So I'm so excited to see how you guys take this and use it on your own Notion page. I'll see you guys next time. And here's to having a much better evening. Bye guys.